Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. So once again, we're talking about the Halo TV show and this time looking at what I consider to be an absolutely colossal mistake that they made in episode two. One that I've seen talked about quite a bit, but which I really need to give my opinion on. That being said, obviously there's going to be major spoilers in this video. So if you haven't seen episode two, I recommend you do so not only because you will be spoiled otherwise, but because I also think it's important that you develop your own thoughts on how the show works without my opinion swaying you. And by the way, guys, if you do want more coverage of the Halo TV show, we just had Mark from the Templin Institute on for a full hour and a half discussion, which I think was really, really interesting, which you guys may enjoy. I'll link to that down below. I'm also going to link to a stream where I will be playing Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga pretty much immediately after this video goes live. That'll be on X2. All right, so let's get into spoilers. The big reveal last episode was that humanity, at least one person, in humanity knows about the halo ring. When visiting the rubble, which is sort of an inhabited asteroid field, John is brought to an individual who spent time aboard a Covenant capital ship. And on that capital ship, he apparently somehow learned all the secrets of the halo ring, including most importantly, the fact that it's a destructive weapon, which the Covenant are seeking. Master Chief now knows or probably knows that the artifact he's recovered will lead to the ring. And more importantly, that the ring is a danger, which Master Chief has to step in to somehow prevent being unleashed on the galaxy. This is, in my opinion, the single worst narrative decision the show has made so far, which is not something I say lightly, and in my opinion, this does serious damage to the potential of the show being any good in the future, and is also a drastic and, in my opinion, really poor deviation from what makes the Halo series, well, Halo. I talked about this in the podcast, but anyone who's played Halo, especially if they didn't know what Halo was beforehand, is pretty much hit with the same emotions upon stepping out on the ring for the second level. There's a sense of awe. There's a sense of mystery. That mystery and that wonder is carried through the game in a really interesting way. You never fully grasp what the ring is until at least the very end. In fact, you don't even know how you've gotten to the ring. That's something that you don't learn unless you read the Expanded Universe material. At first, it's a place to run away from the Covenant. Then it's potentially a weapon which can be used to stop the Covenant. Then its true purpose as as an annihilator of everything is revealed by Cortana after she spends some time locked up with Forerunner Data. But still, that sense of mystery permeates everything. The ring is this strange structure. In a world where you're basically superhuman, you've got all these special abilities, you can flip over tanks and mow down Covenant, the ring is still weird beyond even you. In one swoop, the show has taken the ring from this mysterious object, which it seems like you stumble upon by chance and which you have to discover, to another target for Master Chief. It's simplified everything. It's removed much of the drama. It's turned the ring instead into probably a target that Master Chief is going to have to bomb at some point. And this is an issue the show has had for its first two episodes. They're not giving the audience any credit. They're not guessing that the audience might be a little bit patient. Instead of giving us a few plot threads, like the fact, for example, that humanity is almost annihilated by this crazy faction known as the Covenant, they're throwing every everything at the wall right away. The UNSC is evil. John's been brainwashed. There's friction between various members of the UNSC. And now that the ring exists and that it's a weapon, it's frustrating because the ring itself is easily the most compelling aspect of the show. And in my opinion, the other flaws that were present in episodes one and two weren't fatal to the show's, I think, quality, or at least how much I would be interested in it because it's still a pretty good setup. So imagine this, episode one goes the exact same. Episode 2 goes pretty much the same as well, just without Master Chief learning the secret about the ring. Episode 3, maybe Cortana is introduced. We learn a bit more about some of the things going on across the galaxy. Maybe we see the Covenant actually attack some people. The Spartans go on what seems to be an unrelated mission, maybe separating them from Master Chief. Then, surprisingly, in what would be somewhat of a Red Wedding moment, we get Episode 4, where the Covenant come out of nowhere and absolutely demolish Reach's defenses and the planet itself. Master Chief is still locked up or in jail or something,
thing. So he's separated from the rest of the other Spartans, who, as I mentioned, are on another mission. Chief, however, does have Cortana, who's attempting to rein him in. They leave the planet with the help of Captain Keys and take with them the Forerunner artifact. When piloting away their ship, whether it's the Pillar of Autumn or something else, Cortana, who has been deciphering this strange Forerunner artifact, puts in the coordinates she finds within and takes them to the Halo Ring. And if that sounds kind of derivative, well, that's because that's essentially the story we get in the games. And that shows that even with some of the missteps, I think, in episodes one or two, they still could have moved the story back in a way that Halo fans would have been interested in. And the dynamic is completely different with the UNSC and Master Chief jumping off into the void, into the great unknown and discovering this ring. That's a different tone. That's a different setup than if they're taking a mission to Halo, which just fundamentally changes everything. I also think that situation would do well with the show's structure. Master Chief gets some time alone, but the show's also spent a lot of time developing these other characters, even within two episodes. Now they can go off and do something else. Maybe the Spartan team has a run-in with Soren and the girl, or maybe they're stuck on Reach with Halsey, as was the case with the novels, Presumed Dead. The Covenant girl gives us more perspective of what's going on within the Covenant and how they're responding to Chief's departure and the glassing of Reach, and I also think it could be quite emotional for her to have to deal with another planet being glassed under her watch in pursuit of this Forerunner artifact, where her kind of betrayal of humanity is laid bare before her. Instead, it seems like the show wants to continue to focus on these interpersonal relationships, including that of Master Chief and everyone else, and I feel like that trend is probably going to continue until they reach the ring. And I guess I continue just to be baffled at the choices that have been made for this show. Removing the mystery of the ring, however, to me, is almost a fatal blow to my interest, and that's also saying nothing about the idea that now humans aren't reclaimers, it's only certain special humans like Master Chief. This is something that I think Mark really talked about quite intelligently on the podcast. I do think this opens up other plot holes as well. How did Reth know what Halo was, given the fact that in at least the existing lore, the Covenant always assumed that it was a holy relic rather than an outright weapon, and it's also a bit frustrating that they essentially took a character from the Cole Protocol. There was a Kigyar named Reth who operates in a somewhat similar role within the Rebel, and instead turned him into a human. I think even if he were a Kigyar, that would make the sequence a lot better. For one, Master Chief is a lot less likely to trust a Kigyar. It would be interesting to see another element of the Covenant, another species, and it's also better than having just weird, crazy humans in what was ultimately, I think, a very sloppy scene. But I'm rambling now, so I'm going to end the video there. Just a reminder, guys, if you want to see a one and a half hour discussion of the Halo TV show, not only negatives, but I think we all also had some positives. I'm going to put a link to that down below. I promise it's a little more balanced than this video. And just another reminder that I'm going to be streaming Lego Star Wars in probably right now. So see you guys there. Till next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.